Yarn Hellions. We are here. Uh, it's episode 15. I'm Christine Parker of Christine Parker Co. This is Sarah Flynn of Superfine Yarn Co. We've got a really fun episode for you today. Um, we've got some cool stuff to recap and tell you about and new yarn and uh, we're going to check in with the retro world knit along and it should be a fun episode. We're glad you're here. <laughs> um, let's talk about Worldwide Knitting and Public Day. It was so much fun. Yeah. yeah. We had such a nice turnout. We, um, we got together uh, this past weekend, um, Saturday it was, Worldwide Knitting and Public Day, which actually uh, I'm... I think should be changed to worldwide stitch in public day because it's not just for knitters. Yeah. yeah. Um, crocheters are welcome to and spinners and you know, any, All any, stitches. yeah. Embroidery fans, weavers, any, I feel like it should encompass all of the fiber arts. Yeah. Um, so worldwide stitch in public day. Um, and we got together at a park in Cleveland, um, Edgewater Park, which is right on the beach. So nice. um, yeah, right on the shore. It was really nice. We had some shade. Uh, we were knitting in public. No one, um, no one like came and was like bothered us though. No, no. Yeah, it was. I mean, I was expecting you know, if you like, like you're knitting at a doctor's office or whatever, oh, and everybody's yeah. like, yeah, what are you making? You know, they always want to talk to you about it. Um, but yeah, nobody nobody came and talked to us, so we got to knit in public and also not be bothered. <laughs> Phyllis Vance was the star of the show. Phyllis Vance was there. Phyllis Vance is my bulldog. Um, she hates being outside. Uh, she doesn't like to touch grass. She did well. She went from blanket to blanket. <laughs> yeah, she was okay. Um, and she crashed so hard when we got home. She just she was starting to crash near the end. She was <laughs> yeah. having like having some nap time. She's an introvert. She's my introvert dog. I get it. She had to rest. I hope at the beginning she would pick someone and go and kind of lean on them mm -hmm. and then pick another person. And go. Yeah. She was doing really good. Yeah. yeah. So she's, that's my good girl, Phyllis Vance. Yeah. So we had fun. Um, a lot of people came and some people that I had never met before. Um, mm -hmm. So that was, yeah, that was really fun. Uh, um, let's see. Karen was new. Um, who else did we meet? Becky. Becky, we met. Um, Mariah was there. Mariah was there. Mariah and Sam. And um, I'm blanking. But uh, Sierra yeah. and Lauren and I'm, I'm, I can't remember everybody who was there. There was like 12 or 15 people there. It was pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, thanks everybody for, who came out and hung out with us and read in public. That was cool. Um, it was also my birthday this past weekend. My mommy made me a cheesecake. That's so nice. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, can you make me a cheesecake? Like, just like just for me. I don't want to put candles on it and share it with everybody. Like, <laughs> I want my own personal cheesecake. And what? You had toppings, but I didn't see what they were. Oh, yeah. um, she made, like, strawberry strawberry sauce to go on it. Yeah, it was really That's yummy. Awesome. Uh, it's gone now. <laughs> uh, I love cheesecake. cheesecake. I would take I cheesecake over cake, cake any day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then two weeks ago, I went camping with um a company called gather and grow and uh it was like so camping we went to ohio pile in um which is not in ohio which i didn't know when signing up for this trip it's in pennsylvania uh near um like the west virginia border um and it was like a like a women's retreat so we went and it was like it wasn't required, but it was recommended that everybody turn off their phones and, you know, just like connect unplug. with, yeah, unplug and connect with nature and, um, and with each other. And it was really fun. It was, it was so nice to walk into a group of strangers and feel like immediately welcomed and accepted, like exactly, exactly as I am. So it was cool to just be my authentic self all weekend. And also we got to play in a river, which was fun. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going, my friend um, Jadia and I are going to go in September again. Um, yeah, it was super relaxing. So just really nice. um, like you sign up and there's a lot of different women that come for that, mm -hmm. that weekend that don't know yeah. each other. Right. Exactly. Okay. I yeah. wasn't sure. I didn't know that. Um, there were probably 20 or 25 women there, but 
um, I think some of them knew each other because a lot of the same people go on the trips. Like there's a trip, a camping trip every month between April and October. So a lot of people go on a bunch of them. Yeah. So yeah, you might, uh, like if you go, you might meet, you know, see some people that, um, you've met before. I know there are a handful of folks who are going on the September trip who also went on the June trip. So we'll see some, some friends. And it was one of the best things I think was like, you know, you, you walk in on Friday night as strangers and by Sunday you're like, I love you. You're my best friend. I miss you so much. <laughs> it was, it was really, it was a great weekend. It's so good. Yeah. Um, I see you have some sad notes. On, I do. I don't have much notes. except this has been kind of all consuming. I was going to post the stories and I just was like, Oh, I can't. Yeah. Um, Tuesday, Monday night last week, um, Dexter was lying on his side. He's been having some just assorted health issues and not eating for like two weeks or not mm -hmm. being interested in food, which is yeah. not him. And I had had him in maybe four weeks ago. His back legs are weak and we've been going mm. through all this and, He's laying on his side and I'm rubbing his belly and he has this, he has a growth, like kind of like down by his groin mm -hmm. that is definitely like new and mm -hmm. it's really big. And mm -hmm. I was so upset. Call the vet in the morning. They said, well, we can get you in in six weeks. I know. I'm like, I'm, I'm just so upset. Um, they said like everyone's catching up post COVID with appointments and yeah. they just booked. And I wanted to say, well, this is like different than a regular right. so i went to we have a um on the west side there's um west park animal hospital which you can walk in oh that's um, nice but of course it's not walk in they come out and get him and bring him mm -hmm. in which i didn't like because i couldn't be with him <laughs> um so but it's still inconclusive they did a needle biopsy mm -hmm. sent it away i just got the results yesterday which they couldn't tell what it is hmm. so um, I'm going to my regular vet in two weeks. Um, she gave me a lot of suggestions. He needs blood work. He mm -hmm. needs this and that. And they can kind of, um, she'd like him to have a, like a biopsy that's taking a bigger piece mm -hmm. out and they can do a better analysis of it. But I'm just, Aww. Oh, it's just, it's so, I've just been really torn up about this. That's he's hard. Like old boy and he's just not, this, he's just not feeling the same it's yeah. really hard so Aww. um she the the emergency vet was so nice and just really like was great at talking to me and knowing that yeah. i was having a hard time so um that's been consuming my thoughts so, yeah yeah how old is dexter he's 12 okay so he's an old boy i know i know it, it, it doesn't make it my baby i know, I know. <laughs> it doesn't make it any easier like have you had him since a puppy no i got him when he was two Okay. So it's like almost, almost a puppy. Like, yeah, yeah. Um Yeah, that's it's like like when you don't have children, like your pets oh, yeah. are your children. Like and maybe that's even when you do have human children, right. your pets oh, are also your children. But yeah, it's so hard. Ugh. Um I was just gonna and I can we can cut this out if if you don't wanna talk about it on air or whatever, but I just wondered if you'd ever lost a pet. Before. Just um, family pets, not my personal yeah. pet. He was my first adult pet that I've had yeah. myself, that Aww. I got myself. So, yeah. So, so hard. It's going to be a hard one. So hard. Yeah. And there's nothing, there's like nothing that anyone can say or do to make it better. It's just, no. it's so awful. Yeah. So I just, you know, the lady's really nice. She's like, we'll deal with whatever it is. And she's sending the results to my vet. And she's like, we'll just, you know, we have all these options. And, mm -hmm. you know, if it is the worst, we'll make them comfortable. Yeah. Anyway, I'll hope for the best. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll keep we'll keep we'll keep Dexter in our hearts, in Thank our you. thoughts, and our prayers. He's a good so, boy. Anyway. Um. Yeah. What were you gonna say? Oh, I was gonna say if you have knitting stuff to talk about, that's more fun than that. But I just wanted to give we you do. guys an update. We do. Well, that's okay. It's that's okay to fun. have. Like real life is sometimes there's Ugh. wah wah moments. <laughs> it's okay to talk about them. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's, shall we transition to, Ooh, let's do our giveaway. First. Oh yes. I pulled it this morning. I forgot what our question was last time. It was, what are you, what's in your queue or what summer thing? Oh yeah. Are you what, knitting? Yeah. What stuff are you knitting? So yeah. the prize was this amazing skein of misfit yarn that I really want to keep. 
uh, and then a set of size five um, collage needles. And who was our winner? Rebecca M. Rebecca M. Yay! Um, thanks for entering. Make sure we'll we'll uh, reply to one of your comments on um, YouTube, but you can either email us at yarnhellions at gmail.com or send us a DM with your um, contact info and we'll, and we'll get this to you. I think she was the one who um, said she does the same thing that you do on your sleeves with all the, the markers. So. Oh, good. Yes, that made me feel so much better that I'm not, not alone being, being a weirdo. Yeah, with my, with my many stitch markers. And then um, I think we've been doing a lot of giveaways, so I think we're going to kind of alternate or maybe not have a giveaway every mm-hmm. single episode. We're going to do a Instagram giveaway mm-hmm. coming up. Yes. And you want to tell us about it? Yeah, sure. So um, we, you viewers and shops and yarn dyers and all you awesome folks who make stuff have been sending us things to review and to, um, to do use for our giveaways, and we super appreciate that. Um, so if you'd like to send us something, um, the our address is on our YouTube page. It's to the Hildebrand Building, so you can send send us a little package. We'll we'll talk about it on um, on an episode. Um, but we're like, okay, we have this mailbag segment of our show, but like we want to name it something cute. So we're gonna have a giveaway on Instagram. Um, it will start tomorrow, which for you will be Saturday. <laughs> uh, for us, that's like next week. Um, and so Saturday you can go on our Instagram. There will be a post, uh, where you can suggest like your cute, fun names for our mailbag, um, segment. And then whatever, we'll pick one, whatever one we like, we'll send you, um, you'll win a sticker pack. So you can go in my, my shop and pick like three stickers and we'll send them to you. And then you will have flair for your water bottles or your laptop or car bumper or phone, whatever. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, help us out. Help us think of a cool name for our, for the mailbag. Every time I talk about the mailbag, the song from Blue's Clues I don't even, runs I don't in know my head. Is. Here's the mail. It never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like too old for that show, but my, my little brothers used to watch it. And oh. like, I can't, like anytime I hear the word mail, I'm like, it, it's in my head. Oh so. my <laughs> Okay, so our next segment, we were going to talk about the patterns that you suggested in your comments from last time that you're knitting for this. A lot of them tended to be summer patterns. Mm -hmm. Um, So we were going to share five of them. And then we asked our friend Mandy at Free Spirit Fibers in West Virginia to help us out with some yarn choices. She uh, specializes in eco-friendly yarn. And Mm. she has a lot of details um, on each page about like whether it's vegan, you know, all sorts of things so you can be informed about your yarn choices. Cool. Um, so she is very generous and gave us a coupon code for all of you Hellions. Um, it's 20% off with the coupon code yarn Hellions, all one word. We'll put it and, on the... Yeah, we'll definitely put it up uh, until July 1st. So I'm excited that we have a coupon code. Yeah, her shop, <laughs> um, her shop is in West Virginia, yep, right? Yep, But she sh- she'll ship... Yeah, she has an okay. online shop. She'll ship. I've ordered from her before. Cool. So, yeah. Oh, there's some. <laughs> We're here taping during the week, which is a little loud at the Hilda Brand. <laughs> um, so the first pattern is the Streamline Tank by Two of Wands. This is super cute. I've been hearing a lot about Two of Wands lately. Yeah. Um, can you see that little detail? I really love the detail in yeah. there. Is it, if they could just tone it down a little, that would be like, great. We are recording. We should have a little, a little like placard out. Quiet, please. Or like the little, the green light or whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a um, brick floor. So like anything you roll across is like going to be wow. So. Um, this, oh, yeah, sorry. Ahead. Well, no, I was just going to ask the detail on that tank. Is it lace or it's like ribbing? Yeah, it's like ribbing. So can you show them? yeah, yeah. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can. That's really up. cute. Yeah, I really That's like pretty. that. So Mandy suggests using Hampton by Cascade Yarn, which is a DK weight cotton and linen blend. Nice. So it'd be really good for summer. So um, DK light worsted. Um, it was cheap too. Eleven fifty a skein. Um, I this was my color choice. 
kind of a lavender, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of different colors you can choose from. I love cascade yarns. Yeah, and I don't knit with linen that much. Well, I, I never don't have knit with plant fibers that much either. So, Neither do I. Um, yeah, a cotton linen one would be nice for summer. Mm -hmm. um, another one. Oh, and that was suggested by Tammy on our comments. So I picked some and sent them to Mandy, and then she matched up the yarn for us. Uh, next one. This one is super cute. Uh, the Eyelet Bell Sleeve Top by Loopy Mango. That, like, I love those eyelets in there. They're really cool. Um, that was suggested by T Jen T. And Mandy suggested using the Mariposa Organics Cotton Yarn by Eco Butterfly Organics. Uh, it's air and weight, but she said it's on the heavy side, so she thinks it will work for this pattern. It's fair trade, dyed in Peru. Mm. And then it was so interesting, there was a lot of botanical dyes that they used for it. So she lists them on that page. You can go read mm -hmm. about it. But one was uh, eucalyptus leaves. Mm. One was, I'm not familiar with, huito, which is a rainforest fruit. I've never heard Chlorophyll that. from spinach. Huh. Molly, male, M-O-L-L-E, leaves from a pepper tree. Um, so yeah, really interesting. There's um, a lot of different dyes they use for that one. That I think it's pronounced cochineal. I'm terrible at pronouncing that. So I don't know, didn't know it was cochineal or cochineal. I'm so, sure someone will there's correct something, us. There's something, one's an episode that we don't know. <laughs> so that's it for this episode. So yeah, cochineal it's, is like, it's a, it's a little red, red beetle, beetle that they dry and then powder to make like red dye. Mm -hmm. um, they also use that in food. Because sometimes when they use it, it's not, yeah, they use it for coloring. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and I have a picture. Oh, oh, look how cute these are. Ooh, that has good texture. Super good texture. So you can see um, kind of the botanical ones, and then I think the two pink ones are the ones that are dyed with the beetle. Who knew that beetles and, like, spinach leaves made such good colors? I know. I like, know. I I'm find, really... uh, like, uh, organic, you know, like, plant-based dyes are so cool. Yeah. Have you yeah, ever tried it? I have. There's a lot to it. So um, I've been wanting um, to get more into it. There's just, there's a, there is a lot to it that yeah. I don't know. So um, I've dabbled in it a little bit. I did a little indigo dyeing with my mom when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, it, it is a whole other skill set. And I just, yeah, I've not, yeah. not gone there. Um. Ooh. Look at those. I know. I, I really like this one. Um, so, oh, and I don't know if I said that one. That was um, cotton. I did say organic cotton. Yeah. yeah, the last one. Okay. So next one is the Koi Tea by Ginkgo Bee. It's suggested by Rebecca. Look at that. That is so flipping pretty. I know. I really, I love, like, with, like, kind of, like, the skirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... So Mandy recommends Bellatrix by Vegan Yarn. It's 100% bamboo, hmm. which I love. Actually, I, I really love these colors. So um, so it's hand dyed in small batches using low impact, non-toxic dyes. Nice. But I love this color range here. I would really use any of those. I'm, mm -hmm. I don't know which one I would choose. I think maybe the, the teal or the light blue. I don't know. I like all of those. It would all be really pretty. I know. I know. And snuck a cowl in here, the Anguli Cowl by Hillary Smith Callis, uh, suggested by Grandma G. Um, Mandy recommends Ravello by Fibra Natura. Oop, and I didn't show the cowl. I love garter stitch stripes. And the stripes, so I know. Much. I'm like, and it's, yeah, it's kind of just a little toss on one. Um, so Ravello is a beautiful Italian yarn, a blend of cotton, extra fine merino, and cashmere. And the cashmere is recycled from sweaters, so they find a second life as an eco-friendly addition to this luxurious cool. yarn. Cool. So, that's Ravello. 
And then the last one, the um, pattern was suggested by Mandy herself. She thought this was a good one. Um, and this is Persephone by Caitlin French. The black really speaks to my, to my heart. <laughs> Your heart. <laughs> That's um, cool. It's really cool. So um, she recommends. Yeah. Looks like Pikachu, but I, I know, know that's I had to not get what it closer. is. <laughs> Pacucho Organic Cotton Sport by Eco Butterfly Organics. And um, it's fair trade, sustainable, and vegan. Nice. So it has some nice color choices as well. Beautiful neutrals. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like the tobacco color. Mm hmm. So thank you so much to Mandy and to all of you who sent in what is in your queue. So, um, and, you know, check out Mandy's site, um, Free Spirit Fibers in West Virginia. Um, and yeah, uh, if you can use the, our coupon code mm -hmm. to get 20% uh, off. And um, that's yeah. good through July, right? July 1st. Cool. Yeah. So. Thanks, Mandy. Yeah. I want to knit all of those. I know. I go, going through them. I'm like, I want to try, yeah, I want to try the bamboo and the, actually all of them, but I think bamboo and the cotton linen blend I really want to try. I think the reason I've never, like, I've made, like, dishcloths with, like, cotton, you know, cotton yarn. Yeah. Um, but I think I've never used, like, linen or, like, bamboo because I feel like those are only good for garments, which I almost never knit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm starting to get more interested in them. Um now that I've made a couple, but I don't know. Do you guys think that like, I don't know, are, are there other things besides like sweaters or tops that you would use um, like I summer fibers for? You hear about like linen shawls. Or yeah, like, not yeah. very often. Or maybe you do and I, you, you know, they're out there know. and they're just not on my radar. So yeah, let us, uh, give us your suggestions for non-garment summer summer knits mm -hmm. like there was that one cow though that was like a a blend right it was a cotton that was the one that was cotton and merino and the recycled cashmere yes okay yep, yep. yeah cool all right so i have some yarn to show off yay i'm really excited about this <laughs> <laughs> and um it happened again we're at the spell well, well i still had the um monthly colors um these are the july colors so I, um, they just finished drying. So let me see which one. Uh, first I'm gonna do. Um, I love that one. Oh my gosh, um, the sock yarn, which is enticed sock, which is kind of like a silvery gray, and then a little bit of pop of color on the end. So um, kind of like fruity, peachy, strawberry kind of mm -hmm. inspired. Um, so kind of when you knit it, you'll get like the little pops as you go around was the, the idea. I love neutrals with brights. Yeah, yeah. Super and fun. last month's color um, was just like maybe like a, a peachy mm -hmm. kind of, not quite a tonal, but a little more going on. But I thought this might kind of coordinate nicely love with that. that too. And the gray is kind of like there's little bits of speckles on mm -hmm, there too. Mm -hmm. It's cool. like three different colors mm -hmm. in gray. That. These are the ones that are going in the monthly yarn shop boxes. Yes. yes. Sorry, okay. I wasn't super clear. No, I, I think you, you said it. I just <laughs> That's okay. I was like, oh, pretty yarn. I'm used to them every month. So I was like, oh. That's <laughs> so these are going to yarn shops. They won't be on my site. Um, I have a DK weight, the MCN DK. And this is just a crazy, just like color splash kind of one. So I think it would be good for garments. Um, like little tanks or something. I make a fun sweater. Yeah, it really would. So a little bit of everything going on. I try and vary them each month. I like look back at like the last few. Mm -hmm. um, so just try and vary it. Uh, the, I added a new base, and this is the first time this is going out, oh, which cool. is um a super wash worsted nice um so it's kind of similar i really um that mcn dk does really well um and it just it knits up nicely um and this is kind of the same 
same idea. Um, Squishy. Doesn't have um, the cashmere, but. So for this one, same as the gray, just blue with the pop of pink. Um, so that's why that's really appealing to me. I love worsted yarn. Like this, like fingering is probably my favorite weight, but then I would say worsted is my second favorite yeah. that I use the most. It's just so like it's versatile and it makes everything go so fast. Yeah, yeah. After knitting with fingering so much, you're like, whoa. <laughs> so I want to pick something doing that with that. So. Um, I won't have it in my shop for a little while. I actually have um, all of my yarn, like 90% of my yarn, I shipped to Fiber in Nina, Wisconsin yesterday for a chunk show. Oh, cool. She had contacted me a while, a while ago, um, and June's kind of slow anyway online, so mm-hmm. it's a good time to, to do it. So um, I'm hoping she has a good month with the yarn, and then I'll get it back in July in time for Fiber World which is an online show. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I really, I put a little note on my site that um, pretty much the shop is closed. There's a few little things on there. Um, I have a question. Yeah. yeah. What exactly is a trunk show? So um, there's in-person trunk shows where like I would take, let's say I go to around the table and I take, you know, bins of my yarn and I stand there and I talk to people and it's a nice way, you know, to like meet the dyer and talk Mm -hmm. to them and have them, you know, choose things for you. And then now um, people have been doing ship trunk shows so like um i ship this to wisconsin she keeps it for a month and sells what she can and ships it back to me okay so cool yeah, it's just a nice nice way you know um instead of me driving to wisconsin um this is a way i can have my yarn exposed to a bigger audience and Fun. yeah yeah so my only problem is i'm small enough where i usually always have under 200 skeins of yarn and to ship off like most of that is, is a little tough so this is the first time mm-hmm. i'm doing a one that's um that i'm not at um because i had talked to another shop and she said well send us about 400 and i, okay. I said i said to her i was like i've never like i've never had that much dyed at mm-hmm. once i've never been even close and she's like well maybe in a few years so I was like, all right but it seems like a lot yeah so um, for one person, yeah, that seems I mean, like, whoa, wowie. I know, I know. I was like, that's not me, at least not yet. So, um, anyway, one day, yeah, something to aspire to. Oh my gosh, I know. And then I know some people have like multiple, you know, they're big enough, they have multiple trunk shows at multiple shops mm-hmm. at the same time, which is just mind blowing. Um, and then I wanted kind of a light, rosy mauve. Um, so this is the sparkle color. Ooh. So something kind of tonal and not as kind of a lot going on as the other ones, but that color reminds me of my grandma. Oh, it's just like, nice. did yeah, she wear like, it a lot? Yeah, she just I don't know. Like I think of like Victorian roses when I think of my grandma. I don't Aww. know. She was very like my grandma who sent me all the crochet books in the last episode um just very i don't know very just very grandma (laughs) you know you know how grandmas are yeah um do you want to talk about the are are we allowed to talk about the color way we are are allowed to talk about it but we can't show it oh we can't i don't think so i think it's going to be kind of a surprise oh okay well, the, it, well we uh, should we should ask actually but i as far as i was thinking that it's a little bit of a surprise but we will find out yes our i um we can peek at it across the room <laughs> the <laughs> around the table colorway for the yarn discovery tour yes. has been dyed and christine is going to take two skeins of the dk home with her mm-hmm. to design a pattern Pat- the pattern's design. Oh, pattern's it's design. Not, in okay. fact, I have a sample with me, but now I don't know if I'm allowed so to show I, it. I actually, and we may be allowed to. I thought maybe they wanted it to be like something Surprises they are fun. Out. We'll find out for the next episode. <laughs> um, so yeah, the pattern. So the pattern that I'm doing is, um, it's like a rectangular shawl. Uh, it's a two skein DK weight shawl in a super simple lace stitch but i think it's so see now i don't know i don't want to give too much away so like you know um the old shale pattern no 
Uh, I bet you do. Okay. I bet you've seen it. So old shale or like feather and fan, they get oh, mixed yeah, up. Oh yeah, feather and fan. Yeah, they're it, they're actually two different stitches, but they get mixed up. Um, and I don't know what happened, but they like they get called the other name when it's the anyway. Uh, so I took this old Shetland lace pattern that's been everywhere. Yeah, there you go. Oh, it does look like feather and fan. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's old shale. So I'm like, okay, what, like, how can I, this is, it's like a super old lace pattern. It's been everywhere. It's totally, I mean, it's famous. How can I modernize it? So I think putting it in that colorway, which is like an eye searing bright (laughs) neon, um, with that, like combined with that, that like old school knitting pattern, uh, I think. I think it's going to be fun. I'm excited to, we'll find out if we can show you uh, next time, but we'll ask um, our yarn shop. Yeah, I might just be making that up, but <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> we don't know. What is going on? Um, better to err on the side of caution. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. Then, then be like, we want to do a show off. Surprise, we're promoting this and we weren't supposed to be. <laughs> um, we're new with it. Yeah. So, but anyway, so they're around the table is like, um, yeah, we're going to need that pattern, like, finished and finalized by July 15th. I'm like, oh, okay. Ooh, it's true. like July, or I mean June. What even is the date? Today's June 15th. So I'm getting the yarn today. I, I have four weeks to knit, edit, and test knit this, this shawl. So it's going to be, this. it should be fun. Look, like, it's only two skeins. It's DK. Right, yeah. On big needles. Yeah, so yeah. it'll, yeah, it'll go fast. Hopefully I'm going to try to knit the whole sample this week so I can get it to my tech editor next week. And then we'll have two weeks to test it. We'll see. Pray for me, you guys. Yeah. And for me, I wouldn't have gotten the yarn done this early <laughs> yeah. if it wasn't for you. I know. So <laughs> this is actually good for me because I'm like, I can twist these up and send them and just be off my radar. And then, and then right. in September, it'll be this nice surprise that I have a call yeah. away in the shop. So yeah. So the, so the yarn discovery tour, uh, I think we talked about it a little bit in the last episode, but it's like in Northeast Ohio, a bunch of the local yarn shops get together and this, it's like a promotional thing where you buy a passport, um, to each destination yarn shop and then you like every time you make a purchase during the month of month of september you get entered for giveaways and there's discounts and you get free patterns and there's i think do some this year heck yeah i never i know me neither i've i've gone to like three shops maybe um do you buy the bag how does it work i think yeah it's like 10 bucks for your passport and you get you know your passport and then the bag um and you get entered in to like the the like main the big giveaway Mm -hmm. and then each shop also has a a smaller giveaway or like i don't know they're they're like gift baskets or Mm -hmm. yarn you know skeins of yarn or whatever um and yeah and i believe each shop has uh its own patterns that you you'll get you, you know you get a free pattern if you make a purchase um and does every shop have their own special colorway or is it just around the table no i know other shops do it but i'm not sure that you know they all do yeah well we're we're participating in the uh around the table yarns in shaker heights they're they're our uh our favorite local yarn shop so um if you want sarah's yarn the special colorway and my pattern that we will hope is going to be ready in time uh (laughs) in september you can go and get that at around the table uh yarns Any other, uh, any other yarn? yarn? Okay. I need some water. You can keep talking. I'm I'm going to have a sip of water. (laughs) So those four colors are the July 2021 colors. They'll be at shops next month. So it helps me. Mm -hmm. Um, If the colors do well and it it, um, helps me to plan what to dye for the next month when I see that Mm -hmm. they're selling. So that's fun. I bet it, I mean, it's, it's, it seems like it would be fun to like think up the different colors every it month. It is, it is. So I really, really like the format that mm-hmm. kind of just have something new to dye. Yeah. So, yeah. That's how I feel about the pin club. Um, it's, it's so fun to like make a new design every month and like people are excited about it and I don't know. 
usually has a swear word on it. <laughs> um, so what's going on with with the pin club? Yeah, so yeah. Um, the June right now we're still with the June pin, which is the radish. I don't I showed it last time. Mm -hmm. I don't I didn't bring it with me this time. Um, and then we selected the July pin, which oh shit. Did I get a picture? Um, it's going to say hard nope. You know, like hard pass? Yeah. The hard nope. There it is. Oh. And it'll be in glitter. That'll be awesome. I'm super stoked for glitter. Um, so that's the July pin. Uh, that will go. It's in production now. They told me I can expect it by like the end of June. Shipping will be the end of June. Um, and then those will start shipping um, the first week in July. Uh, I also, I wanted to work on this yesterday, but the Patreon website was down. So I'm going to start adding a sticker tier Ooh. to Patreon. So like if you, you know, if you want to get a fun sticker, like a three inch vinyl sticker every month, we'll, it'll be the same design. Um, so you'll be able to get it as a, a three inch vinyl sticker or a pin, or I'm going to make a tier where you can get both. So like folks can upgrade if they want to, if they want to have both. Um, just cause it's nice to have, like, not everybody wants an enamel pin, but like, you know, you want to, if you want to support me or you, you like stickers, like, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, so I'm excited stuff. about that. Um, and then I'm also going to, at some point, again, when the Patreon website is working again, I want to add, uh, annual memberships. So if you're like, I love so this. this. Yeah. I'm sign me up for the whole year. Um, that'll be hopefully in July. I'll be able to launch all those things. Um, oh, uh, speaking of stickers, I, <laughs> I saw it somewhere. Yeah. So I, so my friends, they're not really my friends. They're my online friends. Uh, online friends are real friends. Um, the, uh, wander free and queer. They're this, uh, couple, Allie and Danella, and they live full time in an RV in the Pacific Northwest. And, um, Allie crochets uh stuff for um like pride uh like queer visibility so she makes like these really cool uh rainbow um like the little dangly things that you hang from your rear view mirror oh yeah, yeah. It's called. <laughs> like i don't know you can use them as ornaments she makes um like different pride flag um cup cozies and they uh, have headbands and i think like cowls and stuff they've got t-shirts and things now too but anyway this fucking troll at one point came into their DMs and was super insulting. Uh, so they're like, hey, wait, like, let's make a sticker out of that because, like, fuck you. So right. they asked me to design the sticker for them. And it says, fat, fucking, dirty, gay, feminist. And they're like, hell, yeah. like, yes, yes, we are. Like, that's us. OK, great. So it's a, a rainbow sticker. Can get a feminist sticker from their shop. Um, I was so excited to design the sticker for them. I, I cried when they asked me because I was like, yes, yes, that is right in my alley. Rainbows and swearing. And just sticking it to the patriarchy. Um, so, yeah, that's Wander Free and Queer. They're on um, Instagram and Etsy. I'll put their shop link in the um, show notes. It's kind of fun to design for somebody else, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, folks are like... A lot of times people will ask me like, oh, are you taking new design clients? The answer to that is yes and no, because I really like I only want to design stuff for like friends and family, mm -hmm. people that I know um, and and really only projects that I'm super excited about. So that one I was super excited about. Um, but yeah, I'd be open to I'm always open to talking about stuff uh, if you have a design project that you need taken care of. Um, Ooh, and then for my birthday at um, uh, at Edgewater, one of our friends came and she brought me a present. So Sarah R. brought me some hand spun, oh right? She's like, what's your favorite color? And I'm like, green. And she's like, great, I'm going to bring you a present. I'm like, oh my God, you don't have to do that. But I love presents, so I'm not going to stop you. Oh <laughs> so she spun these. This one is... I think, I don't know anything about spinning, but it's like a two ply. Okay. Yeah. So this one, it's like a two ply 
uh, gosh, it's so pretty. And the other one, the big chubby one is like a, um, like an art yarn. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. If I can, if I can knit with it or like make a, like a weaving or something. They're so pretty. They're awesome. Yeah. Thanks. So thanks for that, Sarah. These are freaking awesome. Oh, and she, when we did our episode on tools and, um, notions, she like submitted a bunch of different, uh, um, like stitch marker ideas like the ones with the pearls so she's like she included a bunch of stitch markers for me because she's like i have a ton so here's them for you so oops yeah there's a bunch of pretty ones in there so now i have fancy stitch markers and fancy hand spun yarn that was really sweet it's so nice hand spun stickers what else is on our list anything yarn yeah, merch yeah oh uh, you got that Oh yeah, yep, I talked yep. about that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You want to talk about the retro world? I do. Oh, dig my we were both working on our retro world knit along cowls uh, at um, Public Day. Yeah, worldwide knit in Public Day, worldwide stitch in Public Day. So I'm almost to my third. Nice. Yeah. That colorway is Isn't pretty. It? It's kind of cool and kind of cute. Yeah, the pooling. It's, it's, it's like, but it's real subtle. Yeah, how yeah. It's, it's not real loud. Yeah. So nice. I'm, I'm very happy with it. Yeah, just not a little bit on that side. Yeah. So yeah, that's cool. where I am. I have mine too. It's I've so been. nice to have this project because I can just like knit away. Yeah, it's little. It's mindless. It fits in. You know, it's travel friendly. So here's mine. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm doing the scrappy version. I got all my ends hanging out. Um, I'm perpetually tangled. I'm always in a knot. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And I'm using um, a bunch of Sarah's uh, mini skeins from the last advent kit Mm -hmm. for 2020. I love the stripes. Thanks. It's as well because the this you actually knit this cowl inside out right so the inside is it makes this i don't know the reverse stockinette just like makes this super cool it just fades together really well yeah good job me designing this (laughs) (laughs) um so i think we have one more so in the next episode uh we will share our finished cowls um projects and thank you to everybody who's been participating it's been really fun yeah tagging us and it's been so fun to see what yarns you're picking and um the you know just to see your progress i really i love doing it along so it's it's really fun it's really fun for me so thank you for participating (laughs) um (laughs) i was just talking about earlier we were like talking about how transitions between segments are difficult. So we're just going to just transition. We don't need to have a bunch of <laughs> no fancy segue or whatever. Oh my God, show me. Oh my gosh. Look what I have. Two finished socks. I know, it's unbelievable. Cool. So, um, I just, I'm in shock. But <laughs> Are these, is this your first set this of finished is, socks? Yeah, yeah. I nice. kind of fooled around with it a while ago. And um, yeah, um, but yeah, this, this is it. I, I'm speechless. Um, they turned out so nice oh, and wow. my blockers fit. So they look really, yeah, they look like they fit perfectly right in, in the, yeah. Um, Allegheny fiber self-striping yarn. Um, and then I switched to a one by one rib, which I liked a little better. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't wait to wear them. Um, this would be cozy, like in the fall. Oh my God. With like some cute boots or something. I know. Little booties. I know. I love when I see people wearing hand knit socks and sandals, like, like Birkenstocks <laughs> or whatever. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Good job. So yeah, I'm very, very proud. So that was a long time coming. Um, I have to give everyone an update on my other socks, which is 
two at a time socks never worked for me. So hmm. I split them off into their own magic loop. So could never get the ladders to go away. Yeah. So I tried, you know, a few different things and then I backed up and then I just finally, luckily this yarn is kind of like, has like memory. So mm-hmm. I just really mad one night and I just like <laughs> took off those needles. I ripped it back like to here mm-hmm. to where the ladders weren't anymore. And then I just went and picked them up again, which was kind of a pain, yeah. but I have them on two right now. Nice. So hopefully I can like, smooth sailing from now on with these but these are on one so they're going a little slower yeah those are on threes so now that you have them on two separate uh needles are you gonna like knit one like finish one and then do the other no, one or are you going switching back, back and, and forth, forth. <laughs> yeah i think i am gonna be like a like have a have trouble if i finish one and then have to go do yeah. the other one even though the first ones i did but Figure. I'll try and avoid that altogether. Sock. What do they call it? I know. I was going to say sock and sock. Oh, second syndrome? sock syndrome. Okay. That's real. And yeah. same with Sleeve Island. Yes. It's real. Um, my cardigan, I didn't do anything more with. Um, but I did get um, seduced by a new pattern, <laughs> which didn't need. But here we are. Um, you'll see why... I had to, oh my gosh, my photos are doing trouble. So um, Barrett Wool Company is uh, Susan B. Anderson, um, her company that she started with her family, and she's a knitwear designer, and I've taken classes with her, um, and she is a fantastic teacher. I took one with her at uh, Vogue Knitting Live in Minneapolis when I was just getting started, and she was fantastic, and... She has been into designing stuffed animals. So oh. this is the sleepy polar bear. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just like so enamored with this guy. He's so cute. So he's so cute. So I of course got on um I wanted they have kits for it, but um I just went and bought my own yarn and I didn't want a real real like white polar bear, so I got mm-hmm. this cascade heather. I'm not sure what color I said on here. Um, oh, Aspen Heather. Nice. So got this. And then of course, while I'm on shopping, um, you need a lot of DPNs for this to mm. do like the like little um, arms and legs mm-hmm. to use DPNs. And I'm tired. I have like two sets of DPNs and they're never where I want them. And you know, I need it. I, I know. So I bought myself the Knitter's Pride Ooh. Ginger DPN set. So now I can finish my polar bear. But they are so nice. nice. So it's size is zero through nine. So I already used them to cast on his little butt. <laughs> so I've got a little. Oh man. Oh no. Slipping off. Drop stitch. Why did I do that like that? Okay. Tell if I dropped them around. No, I think I'm okay. Okay, so look at his little foot. <laughs> I know. So cute. So you start with his butt and then go all the way forward. And then um, you put in these little um, pearl spots where later you're going to come back and do his back paws. Okay. So you do like little triangles with DPNs and pick them back up, hmm. which there's photos of, but I'm not sure how to do, but I'm kind of interested to learn how to do yeah. that. So I think um, those you, yes, like um, kind of pick up from here. I mm-hmm. think the tail, you just knit and add that on and then embroider like the little features and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, and he has a little sweater. So <laughs> instead of buying their bulky yarn for the sweater, I'm going to dye some yarn. Cute. So I was thinking of doing an orange and having him be a little mascot for us, but I haven't decided yet. Aww. So, um, I really like the bulky yarn I have, so I wanted to use my yeah. own yarn. He so, does He does look like a yarn hellion for sure. Yeah. So <laughs> that is my Cute. unnecessary cast on that I'm having a lot of fun with. <laughs> so that's all my knitting. I have, um, speaking of unnecessary cast ons, so. <laughs> Let's see. When I was going camping, I'm like, okay, I have my retro world cowl that I'm working on and I have like half of a sleeve on my so faded sweater. But like, I'm like, oh my God, is that going to be enough? Like I'm going, 
especially if they want me to turn my phone off for two days. Like, I, what, I'm, I could easily finish those. So I'm like, I have to, I need another travel project uh, to take with me. And I was panicking. And so I cast on an ardent shawl by, hold on everyone. I don't even think I wrote it down. I'll just fast forward through this part. Um, Janina Talio. Mm. So here's the shawl. It's just like a simple triangular garter stitch shawl with some eyelet lace details. And I'm gonna do it in Ooh. super neon. Love it. Yeah. Um, and I will tell you, I knit this little triangle like the Friday before we left to go camping and then I never touched it the whole time we were camping. I also, I didn't finish my sleeve. I didn't finish my cowl. <laughs> but if you hadn't brought it, then you would have wanted the right. project. Yeah. And what's the yarn? Oh, this is um, Hedgehog Fibers. Nice. Hedgehog Fibers sock. The colorway is Pucker. I actually made this exact shawl in this exact colorway um, a couple years ago for my mother-in-law. And the whole time I was knitting it, I was like, oh my God, I really want to keep this. <laughs> And I, so I'm like, I should just make myself one too. And then, and then we can match. So I don't know. It'll probably be two years before I finish this because I have so much other stuff going on, but at least I have it. Mm -hmm. It's like my security blanket. Um, maybe I'll just keep it in my car for emergencies. Um, I think that's my knitting. I brought my sweater, but I... I showed it last time and there's, um, like I barely made any progress on it. So should we talk about books? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. You have a bunch. I You've been reading to. more than I have been. I, I've been doing a lot of audio. Okay. Um, so I, this has been on my list and I really liked it. Um, did it on audio. And um, so it's uh, Fantasy Theft of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan. Hmm. Um, so it's about Royce and Hadrian, and they're kind of thieves, mercenaries. Um, and in the beginning, they have these kind of jobs they're doing, so you kind of learn about them. They're um, stealing letters out of, like, a noble safe to, like, that somebody paid them to steal. And you kind of are introduced to them, and they get this job. Usually they kind of vet you know, people before they take jobs so they don't get into trouble, things like that. So they get this kind of last minute job that comes to them um, to like go in. I think it's to steal a sword. Um, they just kind of don't love it, but they take it last minute. They go break in this castle to steal a sword and get framed for the king's murder. The oh, king no. is laying there dead and they are in the room. Oh no. And get caught like immediately when they get inside the room, like guards start yelling in the hall mm -hmm. and they get put in prison. And then from there, it's kind of um, a lot of like traditional fantasy things, but uh, I really enjoyed, like they have kind of like a nice, like bantery relationship between the two of them. Are and they brothers? They're not. Brothers or lovers? Neither. Just buddies. Buddies. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, kind of what you would expect from a fantasy, but I mm -hmm. really, sometimes I'll start a fantasy and be like, all right, I'm not into this or mm -hmm. kind of just, and I didn't get that from this one. I cool. really wanted to keep going and find out what was happening. So the strange thing was it was, I got to the middle of the audiobook and it said chapter one. And I was like, oh. huh? so it's two books put together. So maybe oh. I think when he started, he was just doing like novellas. So. Um, it's kind of two separate stories mm -hmm. with them, but I enjoy both of them. You know what I hate about audiobooks? Do you ever get one for, like from the library and it'll be like, you know, you're just reading along or whatever, and then it'll be like, insert disc two. Or <laughs> like, I just got a cassette one. Oh, no. Flip cassette. I was get like, out. thanks, uh, Overdrive. <laughs> Couldn't have gotten a better wow. copy of this. But yeah, <laughs> it's very weird. It doesn't happen that often, but when you get it, yeah. like, this is strange. It's distracting. It is. It is. Um, like, there's no way they could have not, like, edit that out. I mean, come on. Just lazy. Whatever. Just threw it up there. Uh, so, TikTok. 
from saying TikTok made me do it, but um, Ice Planet Barbarians by <laughs> Ruby Dixon is uh, an alien romance. Oh boy. And, and romance in the, the loosest of terms. Um, you know, it's, it, it's kind of like what I expected. I can't really recommend it. It's, um, it's almost like when Fifty Shades came out and everyone couldn't believe it. And it's like, if you ever read any like erotic or romantic fiction that was like hot, you're like, this isn't anything new and it's not very good. Right. So it's like the same thing happening where, yeah, it's like, um, it's like intriguing and shocking because they're like blue aliens and they have like, you know, scaly parts and like, <laughs> it's, it's pretty, you know, hot in that way. Um, there's stuff that just was extraneous that did not need to be there. If mm. it's a, what it's supposed to be, which uh, trigger warning there, they get abducted by other aliens at the beginning and they get raped. And it's yeah. like, why, why do we need this in here? This, yeah. Like, supposed like, why can't you be what you're supposed to be, which is fun and sexy. And, um, so the aliens that they end up kind of meeting up with, you know, are big, sexy barbarian dudes. <laughs> and of course they had lots of sex and, you know, right. So. Um, yeah, that's not that's many turned books me. of that, and it was really short, which was why I kept going through it. Mm -hmm. um, I now that I'm finished with it, I would recommend anyone, and and there's a lot going on with the series too. But the Breeds series by Laura Lee, they're shapeshifters. They're big like cats, mm -hmm. so it's like a guy and he's bred with a lion. And so, mm. like, when you have sex with him, he's big and he roars and he's, you know, okay. like, super, like, human, like, and it, it, they're really hot. That. Yeah, and they're, they're super hot, but they're not, you're not, like, laughing at it in the way, like, oh, gosh, you know. Yeah. Um, so there's a whole series and there's different, like, big tigers and lions. And I, I feel like some, you know, there's definitely series that do this better. Um, so that's my professional opinion so about this book read the breed series by read laura lee series by instead laura of this one instead of this i mean Got it's it. short it's funny if you you know read it and can say you read it it's like did Not you ever hear of um taken by the t-rex yes okay so that Katie posted about it last yes. year yes it's very similar that that book started like they wrote it it's these two women in college started writing these dinosaur erotica romances mm. as a joke but then they started to make money off of them like enough that they were able to quit their like regular jobs oh i'm sure so yeah like this it, i don't yeah and there's a bunch new. in the series and people on tiktok and it's funny people on tiktok will be like yeah um i'm on book eight because there's um a bunch of women that were all abducted at once so this was the first woman's story and now like you're gonna meet all the other mm -hmm. women yeah, you know, like take it or leave it. It's, it's like just... it's like millennia or uh, Gen Z just learning about like they've just discovered French tips. Have you heard about this? No. Like so, there's like this stuff on it on Instagram and presumably TikTok where like Gen Z kids are like, you know, like French tip nails yeah, yeah. where it's like white on the edge. They're like, oh my god, I just like my nail tech just did this beautiful new style oh like god. it goes with everything and we're like wait they've been doing that since the 60s like this is not <laughs> new uh, uh, so on the ah uh, the complete opposite spectrum which i 100 percent enjoyed and endorse uh at great lakes in the afternoon when it was quiet amia and i got to catching up on our tv shows and books and she said the coziest, comfiest TV show that you need to be watching is called Virgin River, hmm. which I had never heard of it. It's on Netflix. It is like a lovely, just hallmark, cozy, <laughs> wonderful show, but done like well. And I like all the characters. Um, she is a ER nurse mm -hmm. from L.A. and has had some like tragedies happen, decides I'm moving to Northern California, starting over in this tiny town called Virgin River. Um, rents this little teeny cabin, shows up in the middle of the night. Uh, the cabin's a dump. The doctor, the one doctor in town who supposedly needed help doesn't want her. He wants to just have his own practice. Mm. Everything's turning bad. So she goes to like the local bar and is like, the bartender is super hot, of course. super kind, you know, um, talks her into staying. Uh, there's an abandoned baby 
left Uh-oh. on the doctor's doorstep that she decides, I'm going to stay here for a few days and take care of the baby and find the mother. She's um, trained as a midwife, too, which she thought would help this little town. Mm-hmm. And from there, things just fall into place. And I got the audiobook. So I did the first season of the show. And um, this is not normally something I would pick up. Like, the cover, it just, like, looks super cozy. And I don't mm-hmm. know why I think... Oh, I you know maybe it's just gonna be kind of boring, and it's not. It's really um, kind of like a um, contemporary romance slash little drama. Mm-hmm. There's some like illegal pot farmers up there who Uh-oh. are a little dangerous, and but nothing enough to like really ruin your day. Yeah. Um, which did you like better, the book or the show? I I think the show. I just because they're all really so like likable like Mm -hmm. the doctor's kind of like grumpy and the mayor is this funny lady and yeah i I think um i wouldn't have picked up the book without the show okay so um yeah try the show it's it's just so fun you're like this is is cute i read um one of the books i read this so i'm still now i'm three books behind you guys i at this point i'm just like whatever happens happens (laughs) just do it yeah i'm gonna do what i can do um, I read Still Life by Louise Penny. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's just, it's a cozy mystery. Oops, I got some, there we go. Um, it's a cozy mystery set in French Canada. French Cana- Canadia? Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> you know, up there. <laughs> um, and it's a, it's like, I picked it up because it, I was, I Googled like, you know, best uh, murder mystery series and this was on there and i hadn't read it so the it the series is um inspector gamash um and this this is the first book in the series where he he the case is um this little old lady gets murdered in the woods she's shot by a bow and arrow and they're um and she's like a she's a painter um and it's set in this little teensy you know country town where there's like a schoolhouse and a coffee shop and an inn and that's it um so like all the various townspeople get involved in the investigation and um and they're all very quirky and funny and the dialogue is good and and whatever and um so um is it a series it is a series yeah it's like the gamash the inspector gamash series um like it was fine it, i mean it's a cozy mystery it was very cozy like nothing you know really terrible happens that i mean except for this lady is shot with an arrow and dies um but it's like off screen so there's not like gore or you know it's not really tense or like you know violent or it, it's not a thriller it's just it was just cute i mean it was fine mm-hmm. i didn't it didn't blow me away i like my murder mysteries a little more murdery a little bit yeah, yeah a little more thrilling um so but it was fine i probably read one more and see um how it goes and maybe like i'd like it better on audio Mm -hmm. um because i kept reading it in bed i kept falling asleep so um but yeah there there is a an important place for like cozy cozy books um you do need that Mm -hmm. sometimes you just can't read something traumatic you know um was that all of your current books that was oh Really quick. Yeah. Um, in the last episode, I talked about Binti, the oh, yeah, book yeah. Binti, and I butchered the author's name. So I wanted to go back and um, correct that because I was disappointed with myself. So she's a Nigerian-American um, author. Here's the book cover. And the author is Nnedi Okorafor. Yeah. And I don't know why that was so hard for me. It's pronounced exactly how it's spelled. Um, but there's like an, there's, an extra N. there's an extra N. Um, well, what I, my English, American so English would, N. yeah, <laughs> would say is an extra N. Um, so yeah, it's Nnedi Okorafor is the author of Binti. And you should totally read this book because it's fucking awesome. Um, that's, that's all I have for that. <laughs> All right, guys, that's all we have for you today. Um, remember to tomorrow, go and check out our Instagram. You can put your suggestions for our mailbag section. Uh, and you can win some stickers. 
Uh, make sure you subscribe if you are jamming on what we're putting out. We would really appreciate that. Share and tell your friends. Uh, our next episode will be July 2nd. Um, and we will wrap up the retro world and then along. Uh, and that's it. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.